Hello everybody, welcome, welcome to a new live stream on the Lydian mode. So, all right, there's quite a few of you already, so I look forward to seeing who's there. And uh, if there's anyone new, please feel free to join us in the chat room. And I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, I did all my tests, so <laughs> it should be fine. Um, so yeah, I'll just wait a couple of minutes for everybody to get in. In the meantime, please let me remind you, if you're new, every Saturday at 6.30 Central European time, we go live on YouTube with these streams called Music Talk Live because uh, usually they're about me teaching you something about the guitar, like today. We're going through the modes actually in the last uh, few weeks and in the following few weeks I will teach uh, one mode every week or maybe every two weeks. And because that was requested and I think it's a lot of fun too, I love the modes. And, uh, <clears throat> and then we, all, we always open up for questions, so at the end you can ask any questions you want and I will do my best to answer and then once in a while I just talk about stuff that happened during the week, usually before we begin while we wait for the room to fill up. All right, so it's a, it's a good uh, bunch of people, so feel free to join. Please, feel, Oh, Indrajit, hello. Reiki, good. Hello, hello everyone. Please do feel free to join the chat room, ask your questions or just say hello and uh, if you need any advice, you know, they're all nice people. And um, what to talk about this week? Oh, check this out. Before we begin, just as we wait for people to come in, somebody gave me this this week and it's great. I've already been using it. And uh, it's just a little tape machine, but I had one of these when I was starting out with guitar and I would record myself all the time. But mine had a two speed thing, so I would record myself slowly and then speed it up because I knew that recording fast wasn't very good. And so, <laughs> and so I would, I would just, if I play too fast and sloppy, so I would just play slowly and before I went to bed I would put it twice as fast and go like, oh okay, I guess it's encouraging, you know, I'll be able to play like that. And you know what happened was uh, at a certain point you, I would record and it would be too fast when I put it twice as fast, so I knew that I was onto something. And then she also gave me this, these were about to be thrown away. And so she thought, well, I know somebody who likes this stuff. And this is a Nokia one, look at this. Again, you can record, but this is cool because you can, you can record with the line input. See these old German, uh, this is, these are the, the, MIDI, the MIDI plugs, right? But they were used for, for audio back then. And so as a matter of fact, a lot of tape recorders use these. So you have to find a MIDI cable, figure out what cable is going to what function, which usually are standard, but not always. And then you can record and listen through just this wire here and you pull up four cables, two inputs, two outputs. Anyway, it's cool because I can use this for the synths, for example, or for drum machines. And speaking of drum machines, I was going to do something for you guys and send you a little something to thank you for your um, very kind, um, as always, your very kind support. But my, you know, the big studio deck, the Revox, that was, uh, I turned it on and I started to work and one of the channels was screwed up. And that's after I went to pick it up, it weighs, 40 kilos and I went to pick it up and I paid a bunch of money to fix it, but it wasn't fixed So I had to go back and leave it there again. So hopefully uh, Soon I'll be able to share a little something with you. Hello, Jim. Good to see you. That is art in a good mode. Thanks. All right, cool Uba Shing. Hello. Are you new here Uba? No, I think we've seen you before. Yeah, well either in either case welcome and uh, what else? Oh, there is something new, of course. The new Legato book is out, so let me just plug it for a little while. Uh, this is the book. I know a lot of you have the alternate picking book and you might have, you know, you might be still busy with that, but this is something that can certainly go in parallel with it because you can practice both techniques at the same time. Actually, it's good to break it up once in a while. So uh, this is out. It's 85 exercises. It's not the easiest, all right, but it is as easy as possible. So if you want to be good at Legato, Legato is a is a bad technique, but but if you want to make it just a little bit easier, uh, this is uh, this will work. You know, it's it's uh, really thought out, and uh, I put a lot of time and work into it because I think like is one of those things. I see a lot of students who have such a hard time, and they practice. The worst thing is when you see a student who practices, and uh, they practice and they don't improve. Right, that's the worst because if you're a lazy student, that's fine. You know, it's obviously if you don't practice, you don't improve. But when you do practice and you put in the time and you keep time away from your family or, or from your studies, hopefully not, and uh, you know, from other things, your hobbies, just to practice, and then you don't see results. That's frustrating. So legato is one of those techniques that really is hard sometimes to pinpoint how to practice it. So that's what the book is for. There's a link down there if you want to get it. 
and it's the same price as always, even if it's bigger. <laughs> and uh, it's a good companion to this. You guys know about this. So, all right, cool. And uh, what else? Well, if you're new, of course, please do this because it does help out. And um, eventually you will be more and uh, these lessons will be of benefit to more people. Okay, I know some of you live in countries where it's hard to get a proper music education and I make my living playing music and also I have a school so it's not like I enjoy too much giving stuff out for free. It took a long time to, to earn, you know, to, to learn and earn. But I think music should be for everyone. So if I can do anything about it, that's why we're here, all right? And so you can get the books or you can just watch the videos. If you can't afford the books, that's fine because we'll try to teach you stuff here in these videos. Reki, are you going to record some Italo Disco with those tape recorders? No, probably not. I could with a couple of scenes that I have, but no, that's a good question though. But I might get into some electronic music later on. Might need a new name though, <laughs> you know. I don't know a lot of people who would accept a guitar player doing that stuff, but yeah, maybe, you know, wear a mask or a hat or a, or a mouse head, right? And then nobody will know who I am and I'll release some electronic music. I don't know. I don't know about that, but I am fascinated by it, by the electronic side of music, especially the, the analog synths, the electricity and all that stuff. But uh, what else is there to say? Um, yeah, no pictures today. I, I wasn't going to show you any pictures because I have the real thing here. So these are cool. If you find this somewhere, you know, they're usually they give them away, you know, and, and uh, they're really cool. This is cool for me because I, I always record a bunch of audio uh, messages in my phone. As a matter of fact, I have found out what happens when you record more than 1,000 voice memos in the, in the same phone, right, without buying new ones. And it starts again from zero. So now you know. If you have an iPhone, you record more than 1,000 messages, it goes back to one. And uh, so these are cool because I, they're on my desk and I just hit play and, uh, and um, I can record something really quick and then jam over it. As a matter of fact, yesterday, first day I had it, I think I have a, an idea for a song. And uh, you all know that I use a four track for my demos. And they, I always do. I still do that. I record basically all my demos on four track and then I put them into Pro Tools and, you know, develop the song. So anyway, enough about me, right? I know I'm a guitar player and we have big egos, but enough. What time is it? Okay. There's plenty of time for everyone to join. So we're going to begin with the Lydian scale. So what do you guys know about the Lydian scale? Are you familiar with it? Uh, let me know your starting point with the scale. If it's something that it's completely alien to you or if you know kind of what it is but don't know how to use it. Or if you're a Lydian master, please let me know as well. Let me know in the chat room and then I'll be able to kind of pinpoint uh, this video just a little bit more. Are you going to record? Okay, that's the same message. All right, so as always, please, please feel free to use the chat room for anything. You, it, it can be just amongst you. It doesn't have to be for me, but of course also for asking questions. Somebody asked me if I could use a guitar with dots, and I do. I do in my chords video. More on that in a little while. But this stuff that we're doing today is so universal. It works in every key, and so you don't, it's not about teaching you positions, you know, so just follow along. I will help you out. I will be a bit more mindful of what frets and stuff, but it's really not that important when we do this, these videos, okay? It's more about the actual sound of the scale and the function. So the Lydian scale, as you can see here, is the fourth mode of a major scale. I guess you all know that. That means basically that if you, if you take a major scale, any major scale, but as always I try to do things in C here, so it's easier. And uh, so I, I'm playing C major. <laughs> The fourth mode means that if I, instead of considering C as the one, I consider the fourth note as the one, which is F, and I play the same notes as C, I get this scale, which is a mode, right? And we're going to go into it now with relative, but that's the basic idea. So there are seven modes, of course, in the major scale. The first one is major or Ionian, which starts from the first note of a major scale, goes all the way up to the eighth note, to the octave. But then there are also modes for the second note, D, and the third note, E, and so on. And that's what we're working on in these last few videos. And uh, the one you're all familiar with for sure is the sixth mode, which is the Aeolian scale, which is also the minor scale. So if I start a C major scale from the sixth note, then I get an A minor scale, all right? So that's a basic idea, but the Lydian scale is uh, the fourth of these modes and we looked at Dorian a few weeks ago, that's the second mode, and we looked at Mixolydian last week and that's the fifth mode. So slowly we are going to complete 
all the modes of the diatonic scales. All right, so let's move on to the beginning of this uh, actual video. And uh, here's the first way we can look at, alt, uh, at modes as relative scales. I know I go over this for every mode, so forgive me if you are a regular of these videos, and a lot of you are, but, but it's good because we don't know in what order will people watch it. And then also, if you want to go back to it one day in a few months, then you, you probably want that information all the time. OK, so that's the reason why I'm doing it every day with relative scales and parallel scales. Reiki says it's a major scale, but with a diminished fifth instead of a perfect fourth. Almost. It's actually um, an augmented fourth, because the fifth is still there. It's a natural fifth. OK, but we'll go over it in just a second in the parallel scale. So as a relative scale, as you can see here, I'm doing an example starting from C major. So if you see here, there's a C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, right? So this is our C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And what we're doing here is starting from this note, the fourth note, the F. OK, so that's why I have my first three notes in parentheses. I'm using the notes of C major. As you can see, there are no sharps and there are no flats. But I'm actually counting from the fourth note, which is F. OK, and if I do that, then I get these notes, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, obviously. They're the notes of C major. Now, is this a, an F major scale? No, F major has a flat, which is B. And so when I compare the F major scale to this C major scale starting from F, that's when I get the sound of the Lydian scale and why it works and so on. All right, so basically, here's what happens again. If I play, let me play um, a C, right? I'm going to play a C note so you can hear it. Just a C, this is just the root. And on top of this, I'm playing a C major scale, right? Not a mode, just a C major scale. Basically, what you see down here from C to C. Okay, good. Now, I play the same scale, same scale, but I'm going to play it over an F chord, or an F root. So now your ear expects F major, but we're going to give it C major. And it sounds like this. OK, you hear it? it, it can, you, you'll probably start hearing it now. Uh, it will get clearer as we go parallel. That's why I'm, I'm a big proponent of not starting scales like this. But it's a good starting point. So if you're new and if you are a beginner, it's totally fine to begin as relative scales if you want to get into the modes. And uh, that's what you would do. You would go like, OK, if I want to play, um, I don't know, A Lydian, all you have to do is figure out what scale has A as the fourth note. Right? So you go, oh, it's E, right? So I go E, F sharp, G sharp, A. A is my uh, fourth note. So you start an E major scale, but you play from A to A over an A, string, over an a chord or an A note, like I did here. Now, I made it easier. I said I want to play F Lydian because I knew that the, the mother scale would be C major that has no sharps and no flats. So that's a lot easier. Right? But you can do it anywhere. If you're still not sure about it, do this, play C major, but in the root, so in the chord or the note, the drone underneath, keep an F. Why? Because F, C, D, E, F is the fourth note. And that will put you automatically, will put you into Lydian. And you don't have to know anything about it. But if you keep watching the video, then you will know something about it. And even if you can't play it like we're going to explain now, you can still understand why it works. All right, so relative scales, enough of that because I'm not a big fan of it. but. It is useful if you're starting out. And also, I try to explain these things just a little bit differently every time, because then you can, if you can watch like a few of the mode videos, then slowly we'll all kind of click together. All right? So this is what's more interesting. Uh, parallel scales. What does that mean? That means that we are actually building a scale over a root. We're not pretending we're in a scale that we're not. We're not doing, oh, I want to play F Lydian, so let me see. F is the fourth of what? And no, we, we got, if I want F Lydian, I want to be able to create F Lydian on the spot. If I want C Lydian, I want to build C Lydian from C. And if I want B Lydian, which is a 
plenty of sharps, I, I have to be able to do it starting from B major, modify it, and create my own scale. That's what we want to do, and that's how we do it. So as you can see, Reki, this is your formula. It's a bit different from what you said, but you almost had it. But as you can see, there is a fifth there. What changes is this fourth, okay? So we have a root, second, third, sharp four, five, six, and seven. So it's the same as a C major scale, but we have this note here that changes the sharp four, okay? Which means it's an augmented four, which basically means take a major scale and raise it a half step. So look at the, at the results of the notes. We have a major scale that would be C, B, B, F, G, A, B. We're going to raise the fourth note a half step. C, B, B, F sharp, G, A, B, C. Very simple, you can do it over one octave. Let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm doing three, five on the fifth string, two, four, five, and then two, four, five. And this four on the fourth string, that's your F sharp. That's your Lydian. If I were to play a three, it would be a natural F and it would be C major. Okay? Now, of course, this is only an octave. So in time, you should be able to learn it all over the fretboard. We're going to talk about it. In the meantime, what you can do is take any position you know, all right, and just raise the, the F to F sharp. The good thing about this is that, about this is that um, there are not many of them anywhere in any position. You know, we think there's E's everywhere and B's everywhere, but it's not so. So if you take any major scale you know, for example, the very basic... If you want to change it to Lydian, all you have to do is go find any F's and raise them up a half step. There are not many. There's one here on the ninth fret of the fifth string and one on the seventh fret of the second, and that's it. You see, so even though the change is quite huge between major and Lydian, it's a big change, but it's not that hard to play. So you just go like, okay, one, two, three, the fourth note, all right, I raise it, you know, and that's it. And that's it, and then you have your Lydian scale. Now, can you do it on the whole fretboard? Can you do it in every key? Well, maybe not today, or maybe yes, I don't know. Let me know, please do write in the chat room what kind of knowledge you have of this. But, but you can, you know, you can start exploring it, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate it now with just one, two octaves maybe, okay? I'm gonna take one easiest, the easiest position of all and just modify it as if I didn't know what I was doing, okay? Hello, John, good to see you from Tijuana. Hey, let me, uh, is this too easy for you guys? Is it too hard? Let me know, right? I'm kind of, I, I don't quite know what, you know, what your level is on this mode. I can only assume that it's similar to the previous one. So I don't want to bore you with too easy things, but I don't want to scare you off with things that are too hard. So please do let me know. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play a C at the bottom, okay? And I'm going to play C major. But now I'm going to go to every F and move it up. And you see it's extremely easy. There's only one here and one here. And uh, this is what you should do if you're new to this mode or in any mode. Don't try to play weird things, you know, just listen to the sound. I'm going to play just a little bit. You'll see how I stop on every note and kind of compare to, to the root and to the sound of the root. And then we'll do it over a chord, all right? So you'll hear a bit of a difference. I'm just going to play very simple stuff. and. Uh, quite slowly because I want to hear the notes. I won't be able to talk because I have to listen to myself play, but once in a while I make some strange faces and you'll know that it's something you have to pay attention to, all right? Cool, so.
So uh, I, I was just I just picked a very simple uh, position. It was just a cage, you know, the, the number four cage position, the easiest one, the one that starts with the root. And I just raised a fourth. I don't know if you guys know what the fourth is, but you can still find it. You can just count C, D, E, F. It doesn't matter your level. By the way, thanks. I'm reading your comments and uh, what I was playing, and it seems like we're in the we're on the right um, level here. And uh, so you see what happens is you go over the scale, you change the F, and you listen to it. You listen to the effect that it has. If you do it over a drone, which is just a C note, well, a drone of a C note, then um, you will hear the scale and it will be easier for you to just fall into that scale. Right? If you play it over a chord, though, you'll find that your ear wants to go to major. And then you're giving it this strange note. And that's the point of having a mode. So I'm going to play it again with a C major chord. No sevenths, just a C major chord. And uh, I'm going to play for like two seconds. I'm going to play C major and then I'll switch. Okay? And I will switch in a very obvious way and you'll hear it. And then see if you can hang on to that sharp four because I will play it only randomly. I mean, not randomly, but I play it uh, seldomly. So I'm not going to do a lot of that F sharp. I'm going to save it. Okay? So let me play it for you again with a C major chord underneath. I don't know what that was, but uh, you see what I did. As soon as I played, as soon as I played the F sharp, you 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 have this thing, right? And then I, at the end, I was playing it more and more. The more you play, uh, the more your ear will kind of interpret it as a as a major scale, actually, because it will kind of fall into G. But you see what it means to play Lydian, all right? So uh, another note that is important in this. Uh, well, let's move on to sound. Actually, uh, is it clear as far as parallel scales go? If not, just ask away, and we'll get back to it. So as far as the sound, oh wait, it says Mixolydian. Oh no, let's see. Okay, let me fix that for you really quick. All right, there's so much stuff to prepare here that sometimes one kind of, okay, gets away. So the sound of Lydian is, uh, of course, due to the raised fourth. The raised fourth is a very unstable sound. As a matter of fact, is the is the basis for a lot of things that are unstable. It's a triton, right? The triton is the note that divides the octave into two equal parts. And it's the same as a diminished fifth, which is the basis for a lot of, you know, dominant functions and all that stuff. So it certainly is unstable, but it's also something that works very well with major. Okay, because the problem with major is that the F sounds pretty bad. And uh, I'm going to play it over just the E now. And then I'm going to play it over the whole chord. And you'll see that when I play, I'm going to play, of course, E major over this note. And when I hit the fourth, you'll know, right? Let me play for you. I'm sorry. Let me do it again. I can't hear myself now because the microphone is on. Let me do it again. I do, I do apologize. E, right? Second. You hear the fourth? The fourth has a lot of dissonance to the root. As a matter of fact, it's really a not, so, not very desirable note. And now you hear it over an open string. Now I'm going to play it over a chord, and over a chord it sounds even worse because 
the, the, the chord has a major third, so it's C, E, and G. That E does not get along with the F. It just simply doesn't. And it's one of the problems for the major tonalities it's always been. There's problems in all of them. There's problems in minor, and the, the, you know, people have tried to fix them. That's why the, the harmonic minor comes in, because harmonically, functionally, the minor scale is kind of bland. And then the harmonic minor is too strong, and so the melodic minor comes in. So it's always a matter of fixing stuff. And there's some people that think that the Lydian scale is actually the major scale. It's the one most appropriate scale instead of the of the regular major, and he, now you hear why, so I'm going to play C major. And now, when I hit the F, you'll hear it. Let me mute the microphone, because I want to hear what I do. Alright, now listen to the F sharp. So the, the F sharp sounds like kind of like when you're tuning the guitar and it's a bit out and then you hit the F sharp and you go like, oh, okay, now it's in tune. And so the, the, the raised fourth has a very peculiar sound, but it's also quite appropriate over a major chord. All right, so that's the reason why it sounds, people say it's bright and it's kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, what well, a brighter scale it is because that fourth is kind of a strange note, the perfect fourth. So the raised fourth works very well. The reason it works very well without sounding too strange is because there is a fifth after it. This is not, we're not losing the fifth. The fifth is after the root, the most stable note, and it's still there. You still, you can still go up to it, right? And so that's the reason it works. If I don't have a fifth, now you see this will remain unresolved, but because I have a fifth, it, it works. It works great, and it's not any worse than, for example, the B that wants to go to C, right? because the F sharp wants to do that, it's fine. The F sharp just wants to go to G, which is a perfectly fine note. Uh, in regular major, the F wants to go to E, which is fine too, but as soon as you have a chord with an E, this F has that uh, dissonance within it. And uh, I'm gonna, the worst possible way to hear it is this. You have the E in the chord and the F on your melody. Now when I move to Lydian, before Lydian. You hear how it, it, it mellows out the, the, the tension. And so besides I have distortion now, it's not as bad as I'm making it look, but it is an issue, right? So Lydian works great with that. And um, the thing with pentatonic we talked about last time, and uh, John Gonzalez, John, you seem surprised. I hope in a good way. Uh, but anyway, the the thing with the pentatonic is the same thing that we talked about in Dorian and Mixolydian. When you build a major, I'm talking major because the Lydian is a major mode, right? We have a major third. And when you build um, a major pentatonic scale, what you do is you take a major scale and you remove the fourth and the seventh. You guys all know about this, but I'm going to repeat it for the benefit of those who are new maybe, or maybe you just need a reminder. So I play C major. <laughs> I remove the fourth and the seventh, so the F and the B go away. And I have C, D, E, G, and A, that's my C major scale, pentatonic. Now, if I play a pentatonic, if I build a pentatonic from a major scale, I have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and I remove the F and the, and the B. But if I start a, a pentatonic from the Lydian scale, I have C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, and I still remove the F sharp and the B, so I'm left with the same exact pentatonic as if I were making the pentatonic from a regular major scale. When we did the Mixolydian video, it's the same thing. The Mixolydian is root, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, flat seven, B flat. But it doesn't matter when you make a pentatonic scale when you build it because you're removing the fourth and the seventh. So all three pentatonics, or, or better said, all three major modes will give you the same exact pentatonic. So I have major, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, 
Mixolydian, C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat. Lydian, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. If I take out the fourth and the seventh, they all came up, come up with the same pentatonic. Right now, are there pentatonic modes? Certainly, but this is not what we're doing today. What we're doing today is see how the pentatonic scale serves as kind of a hub from which you can then choose what scale you go to. So as long as I have a C major chord, of course, I don't want to be too specific with my chord because then the chord will define the scale. So let's a chord that fits all three modes is simply C major, right? There's, there's others, but let's play this one. Okay, so now I'm just gonna play, talk over it. I hope you can hear everything. Over this chord, I can play all three modes. Major, Lydian, Mixolydian. So technically I could, uh, can you hear the voice over the synth? Technically I could um, move from one to the other freely and sometimes you, that's what you do, okay, that's fine. Uh, but sometimes you say, well, maybe I would like to keep major for the core, for the verse, but then kind of at the end of the verse maybe bring everything up on the Lydian or make, maybe a bit more unsure with the Mixolydian, you know, that kind of stuff. And you don't want to have that abrupt thing, you want it to be very subtle. In that case, you can use the pentatonic as a kind of like a like a like a safe zone right you're in major instead of going straight to Lydian you're in major you come into the pentatonic and then you go out that way on the mixolydian or maybe you go out this way with Lydian you see you can switch even Lydian and mixolydian because um, I hope you can hear me uh, because Lydian for example and mixolydian they have two notes that are different so it's not as similar as the major to either one of them Major to Lydian is one note difference, major to Mixolydian is one note different. But Lydian and Mixolydian have two notes that are different. So what if I want to go from Lydian to Mixolydian? Maybe it's too much to go direct. So maybe I can stop by this pentatonic thing for a little while and then come out that way with two different notes, which is kind of a modulation. So I'm gonna play, uh, I'm gonna play a C major pentatonic and still talk over it. At any time, I can fill it in with the notes, for example, of Mixolydian. Now, if I go straight to Lydian, it can be too much, right? What if I jump into the pentatonic for a second? So, Mixolydian. I go into the pentatonic. Now I'm in Lydian. Now I go to Mixolydian again. And to major. Okay, so I have no idea what that sounded like. <laughs> but uh, that's the idea. You see, I, I use these little uh, bridges of pentatonics, and some of them were really short. Some of them were like three or four notes. Just maybe repeat something twice. You know, I, I mean, uh, my major with my B natural. But this little part is pentatonic. And see, now I'm jumping to B flat, and it's great, and it works. And that's just a little, for two seconds that I spend on the pentatonic, it gives me enough uh, uh, breathing room to then move on to a different mode, all right? So that's a, the, the whole thing about the sound of Lydian and why you would use it. And uh, if you are confused by now, it's fine. And, uh, but you can just go away with the fact that you have a raised fourth, which makes it brighter and more amicable with the, maj with the major chord. That's it. And that's fine. And then the pentatonic stuff, you can watch it a few times. All right, so I'm going to wait for just one second and wait for your questions before we move on to guitar -y things, all right? And while I wait, actually, I'm going to show you what I did for the 
for the intro, okay? Remember the intro that I played? To? This time actually I picked something that's in Lydian. The song in the intro is called Made of Stars and the melody is Lydian. I'm gonna show you what I did. But let me, let me, yeah, let's do it now because it's about the sound. So the melody is something like this. I haven't played it since I recorded it. Okay, more or less. But you see there's a B here and I'm in F. The song is in F. So the, this B here is the sharp four. A and E, no information regarding if it's lead or not. C and D, no information. G, A, and at the very end, I'm giving you that B to lift it up, okay? Otherwise it would sound like this. See how strange it will sound with major, which is a, a, a very normal scale, and very useful and very used, but it doesn't work in this song. And the thing is, all the chords in the progression, they give you no information as to why you should play Lydian. And I'm going to show you the chords. Let me switch to a cleaner sound. Yeah, no thanks. It's asking me if I want to uh, update the firmware of my camper in the middle of a video. Not a good idea. So let me see what just any clean sound will do. Okay, so I'm playing this chord, uh, F major seventh. Then I'm playing kind of a, a kind of a sus. Um, uh, D7 sus4. Then I'm playing what basically is a, is a C major chord with a sixth, a C6. And then I'm playing an A minor seventh uh, with, uh, with a ninth. I mean, basically an A minor ninth. If you, if you consider all these four chords, none of them have a B. There's no B. So I'm doing all this without giving you the information over if I'm playing Lydian or if I'm playing uh, basically Lydian or major. But the note in that melody that comes at the very end brings it up. If I were to play a B flat, it would sound totally different. And I couldn't get away with it, with this phrase. You know, with a different phrase, I could have maybe introduced the B flat earlier and it would just be a major a major melody, but it doesn't work with this progression because uh, just sometimes that's how things feel. So um. so I do apologize. I haven't played this in months or years probably, but you see what it, what, it, what I mean. It's uh, that's the idea behind why we use a mode over another. Well, because the song asks for it. Okay, just make sure you know what chords they're playing. And we'll talk more about this later. Let's see some questions. Why does it sound so good ending on A? Maybe I'm playing it wrong. Well, it depends. What key are you in? If you're in F, then it's a major third. It's, it's perfectly normal. I don't think I have an ear because when I play exercises, <clears throat> 17, first book, and I get to the B, that B sounds weird. Ah, um, 17, I should know all my exercises by heart, but uh, there's like hundreds of them in, my, in here. So I look it up and tell you next week, all right? But surely it's something to do with uh, ending on a note that is not a root. Sometimes it happens with, uh, with phrases. You end up on a, on, on a note that's unexpected. And even if it's just simple major scale, we sound weird. Okay, so... <clears throat> Positions and patterns. All right, cool. So very quickly, I don't know what you know about positions and patterns, although we talked about it a few times. Let me know, please. Chat room, comments, if it's later on. What system you use, you use cage, you use three notes per string, you use what? Let me know, and then I will know what to, what to talk about. But in my suggestion for you would be to do this. Start with a simple caged system start with uh, the the fourth position which is the one that starts on the root and uh, 
raise the fourth. That's it, nothing else. And play over the, this over chords, over progressions, you know, get to know it just in this position. You'd actually, you don't need all the positions for now because there's plenty here, there's more than two octaves, it's plenty. You, if you can't find a good melody here, then you can't find it here either, right? That's the truth, so spend time here. Then I would move on to all five positions. So go through all your C major positions <clears throat> and raise the F. Um, what are we doing here? I, I can't play there. I have to play here. Okay, so I'm playing the first position, raising an F to F sharp, then to my second one. Then my third, and so on. You just modify that. Modify that one note, and you play the whole thing. Then I would certainly move on to three notes per string. So my first one, that's what I, the one I'm gonna give you, is this. Okay, so it's uh, eight, 10, 12, nine, 10, 12, nine, 10, 12, nine, 11, 12, 10, 12, 13, 10, 12, 14. Okay, and then I will of course move it to the next six uh, positions. If you don't know about this, uh, it's beyond today's video, that's for sure, but we'll, you know, eventually we'll talk about it. There's a video about caged versus uh, three notes per string, and that will give you a bit of information. Then I will do certainly one string, okay? So if I'm uh, playing over one string, I will start with C in the strings that in the string that you know best. Okay, let's just start here because it's on the first fret. C D E F sharp. Sorry. Okay, and then move on to the next string. Go from C to C. And then. Right, the whole string. Do it on all strings. Spend some time improvising. I won't do it here, I won't bore you with, but you, you will, you know, it's great. Right, it's good exercise to keep playing over one string. And that's it, that's enough. If you wanna do the crazy thing on all possible 12 positions, then it's fine. But you should certainly, certainly know the cage system with the modes, okay? And uh, slowly you should have one position per mode. So instead of thinking of major, just think of the mode. So basically, if you tell me right now, go like, okay, play A Lydian, but play it here. Then I need a position here to play a Lydian. I can't think, okay, well, wait, a Lydian is kind of like D major, so let me find D major. No, 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 you can't do that. So your goal would be to have all these notes ready whenever you need them, okay? If you can't do that right now, that's fine, but that's what you're working towards, okay? So, but this is beyond today's video. Uh, okay, so that is art. This is the exercise. here on the okay I got it of course I don't know what I'm playing but this is the one yeah no the B is fine it's uh if it's in the key of F then it is Lydian if it's in the key of C this is C major and the B sounds weird because it wants to go to C which is the root but I will definitely check it out uh, would preparing a circle of fifths for all the modes and memorizing them all be useful? Little work to learn in the sharps and flats. Yes, it is useful, but I, what I would do is simply uh, relate them back to major just for the number of sharps, and then eventually you'll have it memorized. For example, if, if I think um, D Lydian, to me D Lydian is three sharps. But in the beginning it was, okay, D, D is here, right? At two o'clock in the circle of fifths I have C, zero sharps, G, one sharp, D has two sharps. I know Lydian will bring me up to one. Okay, so 
D will bring me up to three sharps. What's there, right? If I, if I don't need to know what's there, then you're, you're there, you're, you've arrived. Until then, you go like, okay, D has two sharps. One more gives me A major, so I just play A major. And that's fine in the beginning, it's relative scales, it's fine. You'll play A major. This is A major, but let me, wait. This is A major. But let me focus on the D, right? You see what I mean? I'm playing A major, kind of, but I'm also slowly trying to think of D instead of A. So my position is the A major position, but in my mind I'm trying, okay, let's forget about A. I need A to get there, I understand that in the beginning, but now let me slowly forget about A and try to focus on this new root on its raised fourth, which are going to be there automatically because you're playing basically D Lydian, right? And if I want to play another example, if I want to play D Mixolydian, I will go, okay, so D has two sharps. I know where the D has one sharp, I know which one it is, I can play it anywhere. But until then, you go like, well, wh what am I supposed to do? Know everything before I do anything? No, that's a big mistake. So what you would do is go, okay, D major has two sharps. I know that Mixolydian will lose one because we lower the seventh. So it will bring me down to whatever has one sharp and that's G major. G major has one sharp, so let me go to G major. It's fine, let me play any position of G major. Now, as I play this, let me slowly focus again on the D. So instead of seeing this scale as this, let me slowly see it as that from D. Okay, and um, slowly, you start seeing this scale, not as a G scale, but as a D scale. But in the meantime, you see, because we all want to know everything, but it, you, if you wait till you know everything to play, you'll never do anything. I certainly don't know everything, I play all the time. And I, I do my records and I do songs and I play live. And I know that it's, you know, you have that imposter syndrome where you're like, <laughs> you go like, uh, they, they, you know, they're gonna find me out. But really what you're doing is working with what you have. And if you keep studying every day, then what you have will, will you know, improve and, and uh, there will be more and more stuff that you know and then you can keep going up. But don't wait until you know everything or you know everything perfectly to play, you know, just uh, play with what you have, but try to be precise. So if I know this, I know this. You should have certain things that, are, that you know. If, for example, I, your example, right? Your example of uh, that circle of fifth. So, to do what I told you, like find the position and then try to slowly think of it differently, you do need to know the circle of fifths of the major scales. Because if you don't have that, then all this process will, you know, will not work. You need to be able to go like, okay, so I, I, I want mixolydian, fine, that's D major, let me lose one sharp. If I want it minor, let me lose three sharps. Okay, so I need that. So that's, that's it, you work on the major circle of fifths until you have it. Then let's say, okay, now you say, okay, but, but I don't want to have to go through the major scale for everything, maybe I should learn the minor circle of fifth because that will give me access to the minor modes in a more, you know, uh, in a more appropriate way because minor modes are minor, so I should find them from the minor scale because maybe you want to jump from one to the other and so on. That's fine, so maybe your next step will be learn the minor circle of fifths, okay, and build on that. But in the meantime, you spent all this time playing all these modes just starting from the, from the major scale, it doesn't matter. Right? As long as you know what the next step will be like. And that's kind of what a good teacher will do for you. And uh, these videos are fine, I think, but eventually, you know, we all need, uh, no, I wouldn't say all, but unless you want to do what I did, I never had a teacher, but I played 13 hours a day, fell asleep with the guitar, and most of you I know work, they have things to do. So somebody who's good and knows what you're doing and, and what you should be doing, and it will guide you, all right? And that's sometimes what, why a good teacher is needed. Uh, John, is this in your book? Do you have PDF of your videos or what book or books would you recommend that covers this? I'm a bookworm. All right, John. Well, I haven't done my modes book, but I will. I want to finish the technique mo books first. So there's going to be at least two more. And then I will do a different series, which will be about chords. Then there will be another one about theory. There will be one about scales. You know, I, I have long-term things with this, 
but I haven't had, there's no good books that I know of about the modes, actually. And, but I will, you know, I will think of books, maybe we'll do a live thing on books, John. All right, so we can talk about this because uh, as far as a quick answer, I don't have one. But because there are many books that are very important to me, but uh, I wouldn't say buy the advancing guitars for modes, you know, because it's not, you'll find it somewhere in there, but it's not dedicated to it. Devon, what's up, Devon? Good to see you. You're so right about that. Well, thank you. I suppose it's about working with what you got. I'm glad that it works for you. And Indrajit, yeah, is it good, Indrajit? If you have any more questions, let me know. There's a few. There's quite a few of you today. Uh, please do say hi. Don't be shy about it. Join the chat room. We are here every week, so we all know each other. And uh, in just a second, I'll open it up for questions. Let's talk about chords very quickly, and then we'll get going. How long? Well, we've been going for quite a while, so I'll do this quick. Um, the harmonized. Lydian scale, which means if I want to play a Lydian chord progression, what chords can I use? Okay, so this is the order of all the chords you can play on each degree of the Lydian scale. So it's major, major, minor, diminished, major, minor, minor. What does it mean? <clears throat> it means, for example, in, uh, in um, C Lydian, I would play the first chord as major, the second chord two, so D major, I would play the third chord E, would be minor. The fourth, remember, is augmented, so it will be F sharp diminished. The fifth chord will be um, G major. And then A and B will be minor. As you can see, three chords are different from the regular major scale, of course. The reason is that if I, the chords are made up of three notes, triads, root, third, and fifth. <clears throat> Excuse me. If I change a note, of the scale that we use to make these chords, then that note that we change will be the root of a chord, the third of a chord, and the fifth of a chord. That's why three of the chords are different. In this case, the D, which is, has an F sharp, becomes major. The F becomes F sharp diminished, it used to be major. And uh, the B was diminished and now becomes minor. All right, so that's the, that's the reason why we change. If, we had four notes per chord, so if we were doing seventh chords, then we would have four chords that are different from the regular major scale. Got it? It's pretty easy. And uh, now, if you want to only improvise over one chord, so of course that's not too realistic, but it's extremely important to get the sound of the mode into your mind and your brain, you would do this. You can play it over all major chords that have no information about the fourth. So basically the C major, C5, C sus2. <clears throat> Careful, you cannot play C sus4 because C sus4 would be with a perfect fourth and we don't have that anymore. So sus4 is a very common chord. But you can't play. Okay, not in Lydian. But you certainly can play C sus2 because there's no information about the fourth. You can play C major 7th, as a matter of fact, it's a typical Lydian chord. You can play C major 9, major 13, you know, all the chords based on C major 7th. And then there's a chord that really exemplified the mode, so I call it the Lydian chord. Not a real name, so don't quote me on it. But it's a mode that really has the sound of the mode. And the, to me, is this chord. It's a C major 7th chord, so it's C, E, let's I'm going to tell you to you in order, right? C, E, G, and B. That's the root, third, fifth, and seventh. And then it has an F sharp on the top string. Okay, so this chord here really ties you into the Lydian mode. There's ma not many... Oh, man. I'm, I do apologize about this. I just realized. Excuse me. I came in yesterday to prepare this and uh, two things slipped by. I do apologize. Chords of Lydian, of course, not a mix of Lydian. But you see this chord really has the sound of Lydian within it. Why would you use a chord like this if you're already playing the scale? Sometimes you want your melody to not be as blatantly modal. So sometimes you want a melody that's easy to digest, right? And sometimes using a mode for that, for that melody might be too much. Sometimes it's too much information, sometimes it's too much character, sometimes you want to keep that character for later when you are uh, maybe developing the song a bit more. So a chord, it's a good way to do it because you have a chord that suggests the mode. 
but you can play a melody that doesn't need that F sharp because it's already in the chord. Mm. So let me see if I can demonstrate. I want to go quick because I don't want to go wait over an hour because I know you guys have stuff to do. Uh, let's see. Okay, any sound will do. I don't know which one. Okay, so if I play a chord, I'm going to play that chord, the major seven sharp five. So now I could play a scale that, well, like a pentatonic scale. Sorry, not that note. There. And so I'm not giving you that note. I, I can still do it. Or I can't watch myself backwards in the screen. I'm sorry. Let me just watch my fingers. Lydian or pentatonic. So I can go to the, no idea what I just played, but I can go into the Lydian just for that split second, right? And uh, I don't need to carry the mode with my melodies. Sorry, that didn't come out too well, but I hope <laughs> I made the point. Uh, hello, greetings from Poland. Hello there. Anonimo. Uh, good to see you. You're new here, right? Well, I hope you, you enjoy this and uh, welcome. Thank you for joining the chat room. It's always it's my biggest thrill to see where people are from. So I don't want to ask for it because I know there's privacy things going. But if you come, you know, if you come forward with your um, where you live, then it's great news for me. Besides all these great lessons, I'm here waiting to see here and at least show them of your Tom Schultz. I know, I know. It's just I have so much work. You're subscribed for a long time. Okay, great. Well, it's good to see you. I know, we'll do something. It's just, you know, these videos, I know it's, it sounds crazy, but preparing is something for every Saturday, even not preparing it, but just being here. And then I, I'm doing the chords videos, which I wanted to talk about, but maybe next time. Go watch it if you're here and you don't know about the series of chords. It's really cool. And I hate to say it myself because I record them, but I think they're extremely useful. So do learn the chords that I'm giving you every week on Tuesdays on the one chord a week. I'm very happy with the series and uh, I think it's extremely useful. So I will try that is art. I will try to do something, but sometimes it's, it's just uh, so much, just to take stuff, put it here from there and unplug everything, replug it. I will try to do things, but please do keep the suggestion coming, even if sometimes I can't do it right away. All right, cool. So that's it, I guess. I'm gonna go back to the Q and A. And again, I, get, I had an email uh, from one of you, not here in the chat room, but about the Patreon, I'm going to talk about really quickly. I don't do Patreon. I think I never will do Patreon, although I think it's great for some things. But because it's, it means that if you pay on Patreon, you do you get more stuff, as I talked about before. I don't do Patreon because I think uh, I don't want to keep stuff from anybody. As a matter of fact, it's kind of the opposite. People who can't pay for lessons, then they have this. So if, if then we put them behind a paywall, it doesn't make much sense. So I don't do Patreon. I try to make it as simple as possible with um, the super chat, which I, you know, people don't like sometimes because YouTube takes up quite a bit of uh, a cash out of it, out of it, from the YouTuber. But I do use the the PayPal thing. So if you want to donate to the thing to these videos, it's very much appreciated. You don't have to, but if you want to, I don't do Patreon. I will keep saying it once in a while. But you can do it here with PayPal. You can even do a monthly thing. It's all set up. But uh, that's it. So no Patreon because everything I do on video, I give it to you. I I I. I don't know, I just don't get the other way. Although, I mean, I do get it, but not for this stuff. Okay, so there you have it. And uh, what else? Um, I do put some, a little bit of ads here and there, but I, I leave that to YouTube. And uh, so anyway, the, certainly we're not doing this for money. <laughs> but anyway, if uh, this was useful to you, I'm very happy. I'm gonna open it up for questions, maybe a bit shorter than usual because it's a bit late. And um, so if you have any questions, please shoot. 
Well, let me mute my microphone. You don't want to hear me swallow the tea, right? What about crypto? What is that? Oh, I mean, you mean like Bitcoins and stuff? I have no idea what, it, what that is. I, I haven't had time to look into it. And <laughs> yeah, no, I just have, uh, I don't know. People, you know, people don't like this or that because I know some people don't like PayPal. Some people don't like uh, Bitcoins. I'm like, what, what the hell is it? I, I you know. And then some people don't like Patreon, some people don't like YouTube, some people don't like, uh, there's people who don't like anything. So I kind of had to set it up so that it works basically with what I'm doing for now at least. But you're not the first to ask about uh, Bitcoins, if that's what you're asking about. I'm afraid I don't have the knowledge for it. But crypto could be something strange too, right? Kryptonite or maybe I should encrypt my videos. So record them all backwards and then you have to watch them backwards to get the idea. But I don't know. I don't know. I think the PayPal thing is the simplest and people can use it anywhere. But, you know, I just had to do something because people asked about it. These lessons are very useful. Teaches to play with different modes using the same chords. Stuff like that is hugely valuable, I think. Well, great. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. That's why, you know, I, I have, I, 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 I didn't do the PayPal thing until people started asking because people go like, well, you know, I really enjoy this and I'm learning. And, and, and if I went to a teacher, it would be a lot, you know, very expensive. So. It's just there as an option. Uh, I understand that if you're in YouTube, you accept that people will watch your stuff for free. So by no means I'm, I'm requesting or requiring anything. As a matter of fact, that's the thing with Patreon that I just, it's kind of like, okay, let me, you know, whet your appetite on YouTube. But then if you want the real stuff, then you have to kind of pay for it. And uh, it doesn't work, I think, with instructional things. If I want to sell something instructional, then I write a book, right? So you can write a book and you sell the book. But um, you know, if, if you're making videos on YouTube, then you can go out and go like, well, people don't, they're not paying for it. You know, that's why you're in YouTube. It's like, if, if my music is on Spotify, Spotify pays me nothing for each stream, but I'm on Spotify because I put myself on Spotify. So once you embrace a platform, I think it's not fair to, to complain about it. You know, I like your encouragement. I'm not the best, but I just play. That's good. We all just play. None of us is the best, I'm afraid. <laughs> Unless you're Jeff Beck. If you're Jeff Beck, you're the best. Okay, so no questions today. Uh, it seems like there's no questions, which is fine. So maybe we'll uh, adjourn to next week. Let me remind you, please, if you haven't done so, if you're watching this uh, catching up later, do consider this. It really helps a lot me reach more people. And uh, what else? Um, oh, yes, if you're interested, of course, let me plug my book again. This is the newest one, and I can confidently say it will work. I don't want to oversell, but I also don't want to sell it, don't want to sell it short because it's a great recourse, and it will, it will be there for you, you know, for forever if you want to play. Or you can just buy the records, you know, there's all kinds of links down there, but certainly you don't have to do all this. You can just watch the videos, learn, and uh, oh, yeah, well, look. I agree, these lessons are top notch. Thank you, Andre. I couldn't afford lessons myself. Good. So that's kind of the point, Reki. That's very good to hear. As, you know, but then I will start requiring you guys to make records and songs and share your music. All right. Don't keep all this for yourself. Put music out. Have you ever made a tune for fun or whatever using just one chord? Uh, I've done things. I've done things. Uh, as a matter of fact, Made of Stars, the song that you heard, that verse could be considered only on one chord. It could be considered an F chord throughout. But uh, the closest thing I have is uh, a three chord song called uh, Dawn Over the City. It's called Dawn Over the City. And uh, it, it is literally a three chord song. Just three chords, I promise. It's three chords and it's a whole, the same chord progression throughout the whole thing. And uh, it's a B minor, A major, G major. Doesn't get any simpler. And uh, and, you know, through the years, I always said, you know, I want to make a song with three chords. And I always ended up starting with three chords. And then, and then I always went overboard. And I remember a song called, um, on, on Mystic Electric 2, it's called, um, uh, what's it called? Um, <laughs> the Best We Can, which is a very simple. So I wanted something extremely simple, like sitting somewhere with an acoustic guitar. And I started writing, and I said, this is it. This is my three song chord or four, four chord song. And then I go to the bridge and I know like, now I need it. So I start, I start putting harmonies and I start putting key changes. And then when I came to this song, which is Dawn Over the City. Mm -hmm. 
this is this is it this is it for the whole song it's verse intro chorus bridges solos and uh, i said this is it this is the song three chords and i always wanted you know my mind was always like no do this you know do that but i i no what, three chords you can check it out it's called dawn over the city it's you know everywhere i like jeff beck too his playing used to blow my mind when i was a kid i thought the guitar was a synth oh yeah i i saw him the first time i was a teenager and uh i think was knocking in somewhere a park he was playing in the park and it was great it was great and then i saw it a few, i saw him a few times actually it's he's great you know it's weird but jeff beck is really incredible it's like I seen you know I have many favorite guitar players. Brian May is my I kind of pick I picked everything I do is because of Queen everything, and, uh, and I told Brian May like you know everything you don't know how important but he gets it all the time, but Jeff Beck when you see him play is like you know it's 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 like it's impossible it's everything is good always, and uh, I seen all great guitar players everywhere and it's never been like that. Jeff Beck is like okay let me pick up the I think it's maybe the closest thing will be Hendrix. But yeah, Jeff Beck blows my mind. Yeah, you can keep it simple. Makes music fun for anyone. Yeah. All right. So, Andrew Segovia got me playing. Good. It was Freddie Mercury for me, strangely, a singer. But yeah. So we all have that record, right? You're going to look up Jeff Beck? Oh, yes, please do many records i really enjoyed the this old stuff like this there's a uh, blow by blow you know the old stuff is great wired but then what really got me into him in the beginning when i was a kid i was like 14 or 15 was the the trio the the the, the electronic kind of sounding stuff and uh, those are called um what who, uh, who else uh i have a blackout now i know i know that my my memory all the songs and there's um who else then there's uh jeff and then there's uh what's the other one man i listen to them all the time I, i'm blacking out now but great uh in the 90s or this, these are records from the 90s you should look them up and then of course there's a guitar shop maybe not his best but very famous album he was in cream well he did everything he was in the yardbirds when uh, you know the yardbirds everybody played in them uh, it, there was um, Clapton and then Page and then Beck and so you know he's done everything but he morphed you know I think he was about I think he was about to join the Stones as well but yeah Jeff Beck is great and the thing about Jeff Beck is he always does his thing he doesn't care about anything so yeah yes Recky was the Yardbirds but it is true there's a connection right because when the Yardbirds with Cream you know there was there was a certain communication there as far as players yeah they're all great they're all great the good thing about Jeff Beck also he can play a he can play he can play a melody or or something and uh and he can repeat it a thousand times because it's so good and he plays so well that he can do it there's a song called behind the veil on guitar shop and he, he can play the same melody throughout and and it, it's it, every time he plays it, it's new you know it's great so yeah maybe this week we should all go listen to jeff beck <laughs> all right guys so maybe it's time we call it a day i hope you enjoyed today's uh, video maybe it was a bit here and there but hopefully it was useful and uh, i will see you next week for something i don't know what maybe another mode maybe i will come up with something else there's a few things i would like to talk about actually but um depending on how much time i have to prepare things then just preparing the the streaming thing to me it's a long time because i'm like you know hey where's the a <laughs> thanks so much andre bye all out all right everyone have a great rest of the weekend and a great week we'll see you next time saturday thank you very much all right thanks everyone bye bye